Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. It's Adam Ratliff with Adam So Fun, and today you are joining me in a hotel room again because I am between events. I am sitting in Enid, Oklahoma today, and um, yeah, I have to get this video done. We got to get a video out to you for Friday, so I am here, and we're going to talk about how um, I design my quilts, kind of my quilting process. Um, this is just my process. Other people might do something similar, but this is the way I do it. This is the way I found um, works best for me. Um, I was just in St. Louis last week and I was talking about how I hate the question, like if someone shows me a quilt and says, how would you quilt this? Because everybody's gonna have their own aesthetic. Everybody has their own different skill level. And, um, and most of the time when I see a quilt, like, it takes a while for that um, for that quilt quilting idea to pop into my head. Um, I've been playing with some rulers. I'm getting ready. I'm doing a new ruler class um, when I teach in Elkhorn, Wisconsin, at the beginning of June. Um, if you're in that area, look up Quilting Connection. Um, we're going to have a hands-on event there. It's going to be great fun. But um, we're doing a kind of an advanced rulers class, I guess you would say. Um, so I have my rulers. I have. Um, little disc spacers by Westerly and I can uh, it gives you the true kind of image of what you're gonna draw so I've been playing with rulers to get stuff done for that um, but I'll also do this when I am uh, planning a quilt so like this quilt this quilt was planned on paper first using rulers using the spacers I believe this was one of the rulers oh a few of these um, the this is the uh, flower power and What's that one called? Peace Out Ruler. Um, the Flower Power was used right here. The Peace Out was used in different spots, but I know at least right there. Um, maybe that arc, I can't remember where the other arc is, but I know I used it. Because um, this was one of the Ruler of the Month Clubs. I think this was Ruler of the Month Club 6. Um, so this quilt was made with only rulers from Ruler of the Month Club 6. Um, yeah, so this is just a little wall hanging, but um, I, I drafted this one on paper first, so I had an idea of what I wanted to do. So that's one way I do things. Kind of more ruler specific when I do it that way, because I have like the rulers to work with. Um, this quilt, which was the December Stitch Along, this quilt, I pretty much knew what the quilting was going to be. I kind of designed the borders to go around the quilting because inside the um, quilt, let's go from this side. One of these sides is going to be better for you with uh, quilting design and angle, whatever. But um, oh, I bet you it's this side. Let's see. We're just going to go right here. Um, in the animals, I knew it was going to free motion. So I didn't have to do anything there. But when I uh, decided I was going to do quarter square triangles, I knew that I was going to echo that shape in the negative space and that's what I did here and then in the border I knew I just wanted a solid border to go all the way around and I just wanted to kind of echo that square again so I just did them on point um super easy stitch the ditch in the in the geese but this quilt was kind of designed around the quilting I had that quilting in mind so that's another thing I do I might design a quilt for the quilting specifically um if you follow me on social media, and that's Adam So Fun, S E W, on Facebook and Instagram, you saw that before I left to come on this two week stint, sorry for my squeaky chair, um, before I left, I was doing a quilt for Stitch House, and that's Stitch House Texas. If you don't follow them on um, social media or uh, YouTube, they have a great YouTube channel. Their Facebook is good. They do a ton of lives, ton of info from them, but I also do a HQ in the No series for them, so you can check that out. But um, I was quilting this quilt for them, and uh, when I saw the pattern, I was like, can I quilt one? Will you make me one for me to quilt? And um, I didn't finish the, I didn't show you the finished product, because I wanted them to see it first. They have it, they've seen it, they love it. But now I can um, kind of go through my process with you. So that's what we're gonna do. And I'm gonna split this video up probably into two um, because I started to make it and realized, holy crap, we're already at 40 minutes and I hadn't shown any pictures. So we'll probably do like top half in one video, bottom half in the next one. Um, so that will keep it a little shorter or keep them a little shorter. But in that case, I use my iPad. So I use my iPad a lot when I'm um, designing quilts um, or quilting because it kind of gives me an idea of where I'm going to go. It's not the final thing. I usually change things around as I go, but it gives me a chance to like go in with a plan. I love to go in with a plan and um, 
but since it's, a, it's an iPad, it's an iPad Pro, so I'm using my iPad Pro, and I'm using my um, Apple Pencil, um, and then the app I'm using is called Procreate, and I can open a photo and draw right on top of it. So that's what we're gonna be doing today. I'm gonna to show you kind of my process and um, how I kind of broke this design or this quilt down into individual designs and um, planned my path. I took a tons of pictures when I was quilting this thing. So um, I will talk about it. I do a few things before we get into kind of the, the uh, my where my brain goes. Um, I use double batting. So there's a layer of 70-30 and on, there's a layer of 70-30 with a layer of wool on top. Both Quilter's Dream, Quilter's Dream is my favorite, so that's almost all that I use. Um, stitch wise, I used Mono Poly on top and I'm using bottom line thread in the bobbin. And if you follow me on YouTube or social media, you know my favorite bottom line color is which one? 623 silver, you're right. Um, so that is what I use in my bobbin. And I think this quilt took almost seven bobbins. There's a ton of stitching. It's a big quilt, but there's a ton of stitching. Um, the, what else? Um, that, that, I feel like there's something else. There's something that I'm missing maybe, I don't know. Oh, I pre-basted the whole thing. So I loaded the quilt up. I loaded it in clear view. You all saw that if you watched the uh, loading the clear view, or er, loading clear view um, burrito method video. Um, I went through and I basted the whole thing. So what I did is I opened, or I got my um, throat, my whatever, I advanced the quilt so it filled my throat, and I did a large stipple. Um, Jamie Wellen has a really great video about that. That's where I learned it. Um, I, uh, and then I think I made like a basting a whole cloth quilt video just the way I do it, which is basically the way he does it. So um, I did that. And that gave me the ability to base the whole thing and then roll back and forth because I went through, that was step one was basting. Step two, I went in, stitched the ditches I need, did my outlining detail, um, it created some negative space things and did all of that. And then the last thing I went back in and did all my fill work. So um, you'll see, I like I said, I took uh, every time I had to advance, I went through and took four pictures and so you have each block basically from the beginning to the end and what it looks like so in this one I'll talk about maybe the top half of the quilt like I said in the next one we'll talk about the second half of the quilt or maybe I'll talk about how I went I don't know we'll see but there's gonna be two videos just because it's, it's probably already long and then um it's just gonna get longer. So I gotta turn you around so you can see my iPad. Um, when I do go on the iPad, I'm working upside down and at an angle so you can see it better. So work with me if something, if my hand gets in the way or something like that, sorry, it's gonna happen. But uh, we'll see in a second. All right, everyone, so here's my iPad. Um, this is the Procreate app, so I'm gonna um, open that up. And what Procreate does is it lets you bring in a photo. So I took this photo, not the best. You'll see that the quilt is pretty wrinkly, um, but it is doing what I need it to do. So um, I don't know, let's just talk about the, kind of where I started, and we'll, we'll work, work through as much as I think that we can before it gets, the video gets way too long. Um, so right now I just have a black pin. You can you can see that running across the screen. The great thing about if you're using something like this, I can draw and then just erase it really easy. Um, so first thing first, I'm gonna look at my quilt and decide, you know, what what do I what do I see? Um, I see a lot of negative space, which I love, and I'm gonna want to go into that negative space and create more detail, more texture, more more things um, going on. So I'm gonna do some stuff in the negative space. Do I know exactly what I wanted to do when I saw this? No, but I knew that that was one of the things I wanted to do. I'm also gonna look around and say like, okay, what, what kind of themes do we have reoccurring? We have these blocks, these nine patch blocks. They happen there, they happen up here, they happen here. Um, so maybe I'm gonna do something with those nine patches. I'm gonna erase all those. Um, we also have these, the kind of um, diagonal diamonds or squares, um, the iris chain blocks. So um, maybe we'll incorporate that. This here, this pattern 
happening here is the same as the pattern happening in here. And these stars are going to be the same as these stars. So you start picking out things that are similar. So maybe if I quilt something here, I'm going to do that same thing up here. And maybe these nine patches, we're going to do the same thing over here in these nine patches. Um, these two blocks are the same and these two blocks are the same. Um, this is the only block there. Uh, these two blocks are the same, just color different. So it's all about like looking and seeing what's going on. So the first thing I knew I wanted to do was in this section. I knew that I wanted to create the mirror image of this Irish chain block in the negative space. So if I wanted to do that, I would need to stitch in and remember, I'm upside down and backwards, so if I don't draw something just perfect, you get the gist. And I actually don't remember if this is what I did or not. But like I said, it, my ideas always change. So there's kind of one of the first things I did. I knew that I wanted to, oh, you know what? That is not correct. Because I think what I did first is I saw this row and I knew that I wanted to treat this like its own row. So that strip was gonna run right down my quilt. So now I remember that my original design I had done something like this, and then I was going to stitch in those uh, like half half square uh, half squares triangles half square triangles. I guess I didn't end up going that route, so we're just going to pretend this. Um, so that's one of the things I knew that that I saw that as a strip. It was going to be its own element on the quilt. Then I knew I wanted to do some negative space stuff. So here's that, and. Um, I threw some other ones in. Let's see, I can't remember where they are. I feel like there's one there, but you'll see, you'll, you'll get the gist. Um, other things that I knew was were gonna be an element. This flying geese set, I love flying geese, and I wanted to make sure that everyone knew those were, uh oh, those were flying geese there, and I'm going to end at that seam and stitch some more flying geese in. So remember, I'm just giving myself kind of an outline and an idea of what I'm going to do. This doesn't have to be the final. This is just kind of an idea. Um, so there are two things. I looked at this section, like this block up here, and I decided that I wanted to treat this block, this whole thing as a unit because we have half square triangles, half square triangles, um, the nine patches, but this is the same, these I can break up to be the same size as a nine patch. And there's my half square triangle. So in my head, I was gonna treat all of these as if they were a nine patch. These are nine patches and then all the half square triangles together. So I knew I wanted to give some a lot of texture and a lot of details. So this is my idea of um, straight line stitching really tight, like matchsticks. So I knew I was going to do that. And I thought, well, hey, if I'm going to treat this as a nine patch as well, it has to get the same treatment. So although these are just three strips sewn together, I'm going to make it look like it was pieced nine patches that just happened to be the same color. And I'm going to do the same thing to this strip set. Uh, where am I going? Oops. Nice thing. I can erase it. Oops. So the other thing about this orange 
is that it shows up in three other places. So I knew that this, oops, that they were all gonna be have the same treatment on them. So this piece was already done, and this piece was already done. This unit done, and this unit done. Because they were all gonna get treated with that same nine patch um, application. The other thing is these quarter square or these half square triangles. I went around trying to think, oh, I could do the nine patch thing, but I wanted to do something a little more fun. So I'm, I look at natural lines in the quilt, things that I can use a straight line ruler to help um, pull out like a secondary pattern. So if I connect these lines here, and we'll do it over, we'll do it on all four of these ones. So I connected all the vertical lines, but then came and did the same thing to the horizontal lines. Because again, I have those natural lines in my quilt. It makes these grids, but it also gives this like half squared triangle kind of line grid. So then I can connect the diagonals as well. And now I have this big patch of half square triangles that of course I need to go in and do some type of fill work and if I do every other block um, I need to see how I thin this I hope you can see that on the screen. And I also did the same thing over here. I'm not gonna take the time to fill that one in. But um, now you can see this has a ton of detail on it. So, um, so that's gonna be the first block. So here's a, here's a photo of it before, and I think it's, uh, a little of that first um, strip just basted down. Then here's the photo when I went in and added more detail when I stitched the ditches. And um, I stitched all the ditches. I did all this detail out here, but I didn't do it inside the quarter square triangles. Um, I don't know why. Or in the, the big half square triangles. I don't know why I didn't do the detail there at the beginning and I waited until I did the fill work. Um, they were all stitched the ditch around. So that was in place. It wasn't an issue. And then here's the final look of what this looked like. Um, tons of texture and it really does, like these look totally like a total different block because of all of the quilting that I did. I mean, there's a ton of quilting, let's remember that. Um, so that's block one. We'll head over here to these this kind of center section. Um, let's see, this block I looked at and I was like, I'm not gonna do anything to it. It's perfect the way it is. I'm just going to stitch the ditch and do some fill work around it. <laughs> so there's that one. That one's there. All I'm doing is fill work. Uh, the other thing I realized when I was over here is like, I really want a buffer zone. I knew I was going to do some tight fills and I wanted a buffer zone between my blocks that I saw and um or anything that was going to act like a block and the background fill so that's when i decided i'm going to do a quarter inch line echoing everything i do so this is all going to be just a background fill um when i do i'm going to delete that when i when i fill this up i'm just going to come in and stitch the sky units And I feel like at some point I added another, um, let's see, I don't know where it came from, but I know I did another echo um, or some more of these up in this area. I just remember where. You'll see it in the finished quilt. Um, let's see, we're gonna jump down here. This flying geese block, I love a flying goose, but again, what I like about flying geese is I can come in 
and they've already given me all the texture I need. I'm just gonna um, stitch the ditch around those geese and then add a background fill. It's gonna make those geese pop out. So maybe this is a stipple. Stipple, stipple. So that block is done. Other than, I need my little buffer just to make give it more visual interest. Well, and I will just go in and build that buffer on all of these units. So this block right here, a little different because we see it has this, this white corner. So you have to decide, do you want that to be part of the block or do you want it part of the background? In my case, I needed it to be part of the block to help get the look I wanted here. Let's see. So I ended up stitching across to give me some more of those those um, half square triangles so this kind of thing I'm taking this element and bringing it somewhere else in the quilt so what do we have we have a nine patch well of course I'm going to fill up the nine patch just like I did the other ones and I have these straight lines which are basically the same white um, white and orange unit so I'm going to give them all the same application. I guess I can come all the way down. This is weird drawing like this because I feel like I'm upside down. And so now all of that's taken care of because I'm just doing the same application that I did previously. But what am I going to do over here? Uh, I didn't want to do, I didn't want to turn those into squares. So what I did is I ended up connecting these. Remember when I said it was a lot of ruler work? And I just went in and I filled in every other one. So um, because this was pushed down and this was pushed down, I wanted this first triangle to pop. So I'm going to stitch here. I'm going to stitch in the dark blue areas and I'm going to stitch in this back white area. So white, dark blue, light blue, white, dark blue, light blue, and white, dark blue, light blue. And now that block has what it's gonna, um, what it's gonna have stitched in it. Um, this was actually the last block I decided what I was gonna do. And it was because it's shaped a little bit different. So I had to think about how I was gonna um, gonna work with it, um, and it ended up kind of helping out all the other blocks, or um, being an inspiration and in where I used it throughout the quilt. So the first one, or the first thing I did, and I'm gonna change the color because there's that black in there. So we'll just use pink. Actually, let's use uh, like well, there's a little bit of every color. I hope you can see this green. Let me see. Can you, yeah, you can see that. Okay, so um, the first step was I was gonna treat this as a circle. So I continued it into each of those blocks and those are, this is just a, um, a piece of a, a, a drunkard's path. So there's my four circles. Well, I had this weird dead area in the middle and I said, hey, what if I get a smaller circle? and put it there because this center square, if you look, is the same size as this one, um, is the same size as this one, is the same size as these. So it gave me the ability to kind of bring in another element. So I ended up pulling this circle element in throughout the quilt. And again, I knew I was gonna do some dense stitching. So I was, this is my, my micro stipple. <laughs> because that stipple is gonna make those circles super pop because I'm gonna stitch it really small. That green looks out of place. So um, I feel like there's probably some square stitch here. That looks like a big empty spot, but I don't know, we'll have to look. Um, I'm going back to black. And then the other thing, because I'm going back to this strip is when I decided I wanted that extra quarter inch, 
I was gonna have to do it over here too. So that is basically this first um, this first piece. So I think that's where we're gonna keep it for this video, just because um, I have a longer intro in this video and I can do a shorter intro in the next one and then finish. Um, you'll probably see some of the pictures, some of the other things that happened in the other videos. Um, but I want to talk about this in detail, so I don't want to put it here. And um, the rest of the really intricate things happened in the bottom, and like this has to do with these, and this. So everything kind of goes together in the, for the next one. But um, we'll just this strip right here. Um, I wanted to do the same kind of nine patch thing, and if I just follow the given lines of the quilt. And I'm gonna turn this so I can draw these lines easier for me. So I didn't have to measure anything. I just used the straight edge of my ruler, lined it up with the lines that were already in my quilt. And now I have this full gridded, um, oops, this full gridded strip. Um, and you'll notice in the final picture. So let me, let's start showing some pictures. So here's the whole first row, just based. Nothing, no detail stitches. So now um, I've added some detail stitches. We can see the flying geese there. We can see where I put in some other um, shadow kind of um, iris chains. We can see the circles a little bit. You can just see them stitched. We can see um, how I did my line work in this block and how I did just ditch stitched over here. And then my line work done in my nine patch strip. All right, so that's all my line work. So here is the last step when we're gonna add our details. I'm gonna add all my swirl fills. I'm gonna add um, any of my micro stitching or um, in this case, you know, micro stippling in the circle block, swirl fills um, in the background. We have the straight line, um, straight line match, matchstick quilting to do all my um, dense work. And that's the first strip of the quilt and my dense micro stitching. So that is the, this is where we're gonna end it on the first one because like I said, once we get down into all this, it starts getting kind of complicated where my mind was going and then how he decided to do this and that and this and well, all the stuff. But um, yeah, I hope you like and under, kind of understand where I'm going with this process. Um, maybe it's something you can um, implement yourself. Um, like I said, everybody does it a little bit different. Um, I'm gonna switch to the camera around and I will see you back here in a second. Okay, everybody. So that was a little bit of my process um, when going and figuring out how I was gonna stitch this quilt. Again, things changed. So um, when I originally talked about having those half square triangles stitched, um, by the nine patches, by the nine, nine patch strip, um, it didn't happen. I decided I, I didn't like the way it looked after I um, wanted to put that buffer in and I left it out. Um, so this is just kind of an idea to see where it might go. Um, those circles were something that came up last minute and you'll see in the next video how I pulled them all the way towards the bottom of the quilt. So I have um, a lot of these pieces kind of working their way through the whole quilt which gives the um, quilting a lot of continuity and um, just makes everything play well together. So um, thank you for joining me. This is again, video one. So um, keep your eye out for video two. Um, it probably be probably two weeks before it actually releases because um, I have to do a giveaway next week and I'm home next week. So we have to do it while I'm home. But um, 
Thanks again for joining me. We'll see you in the next video. Remember, like and subscribe. Make sure you hit that bell icon. Like I said, I have that giveaway coming up and um, you want to make sure you're notified when I um, release how to be part of it. Thank you all. We hit 3,000 followers, so I'm super excited. You all are just crazy generous to um, spend spend some time with me. I hope you learned something and um, I'm so fun on Facebook, Instagram. Follow me on YouTube. Like, subscribe, and hit the bell. What else? Um, Hi, everyone. Can't wait to see you um, if you're in my classes. And we'll see you in the next video. Thanks, everybody. Bye.